that's El, El Bernal? Bernal. El Bernal is located in the Mexican Plateau, a high-altitude desert region. The area is characterized by arid and semi-arid conditions with hot summers and cold winters. The vegetation is sparse, consisting mainly of desert scrub and grasslands. The soil is typically calcareous and rocky, providing good drainage for the cacti. The geology of the El Bernal area is dominated by volcanic rocks, particularly rhyolite and basalt. These rocks are part of the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt, a chain of volcanoes that stretches across central Mexico. The volcanic rocks have been weathered and eroded over millions of years, creating the rugged landscape of the region. Welcome back to another episode of Cactus Quest. I'm your host, Hunter, and in today's episode, I'm in the beautiful state of Leon here in, uh, in, in central Mexico. I'm here in the beautiful state of Guanajuato, no, wait, aren't we in Querétaro now? We're in Mexico, okay? I don't know where I am. I haven't slept. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a trip, but we're here. We're here in the field and there's plants. There's plants at my feet and I'm excited to show them to you. So let's, let's take a look. Let's see what's growing here. I showed you Crucidra, right? Over in Oaxaca. Well, look at this little butte right here. Look at that. That is Mammillaria pseudocrucigera. You can see it's got the little crosses. Right. And this is growing here. Well, this appears to be some sort of limestone. Sounds like limestone. Oh yeah, look at that, it's just getting ready to flower. There's another one I just saw. It looks like it's got chewed on a little bit. Something got hungry, came in here, took a bite of it. But I don't think that's really gonna damage the plant very much at all. Uh, you know, as you can see, it's already calloused over. It's not even, a, it's not like an open wound that's gonna be open to infection so it survived that part and that's really the hard part so this plant is uh we'll, we'll continue cranking on unless they develop this area or somebody comes and digs it up oh wow <laughs> look at that look at that oh my god oh my god that's awesome oh excuse my french that is just awesome it's like buried by this <sighs> i don't even know this like really fine kind of black i don't know what the hell this is I'm almost like, uh, feels like charcoal kind of, but I don't think it is. <laughs> Look at that little fat burst, bro. Look at that. Pretty sure, pretty sure it's probably Phagoroides. I'm not, not 100% on that. It's, it doesn't even have leaves at the moment, so really kind of hard to say. Those mammal areas are actually not what we came here to see. So, uh, onward. Oh, but I mean, I do like to see them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Good eye, man, because that's minuscule. So there we are, right there. You can see you've got a couple of uh, defunct marrow stems where it had either separate plants or maybe it was one plant, cut out probably separate plants, but uh, it looks like you've had some mortality. Uh, I guess it's been pretty dry out here too. It's it's looking pretty crispy. This one has a fruit on it. This is uh, Turbinicarpus pseudomacrocheli and a uh, little tiny miniature cactus here. When you see these in cultivation and you see them like the size of a quarter, I mean, that's an enormous plant. And it's kind of hard to think like that because when you see them, they think, oh, it's so small, but this is, this is here. This is a mature seed producing plant in habitat. Look at that, is that a dried fruit? This is a really cool little, uh, cool little site let's see if we can find some larger plants so you can see having seen those plants like you can tell really how hard they are to spot like this is a, a pretty cryptic little cactus there almost about to bloom we're, we're admiring the uh, flowers coming out there on the uh, pseudo crucigera and scanning the area oh look there's actually a couple right here oh wow look okay so check it out you see it? There's one, okay? Now look, this is my pinky next to it. And then you come up right here, and I mean, do you see it? Do you see it at all? No, right? Kind of hard to see. I'm gonna use this, because my fingers are, are, are horrific. But right there. Oh, you still don't see it? Okay, let me get a little closer still. Right there, you see it? with those two little pregnant fruits. You got some like little red orange mite crawling around over there. Uh, yeah, all right. 
So that is, I mean, that, having a look at these, these are mature plants. Like this is, I'm sure they probably can get bigger out here and we may find a couple bigger ones, but that is a, a you know, reproductively mature. Oh, there's another one. Look, look at that little fella. See him? Oh my God, dude. There's another one. Oh, it's a seedling. This one's young. And you know, you, you know how you can tell this one's younger. Look at the spines. Right? This one still has like, it still has the little seedling spines. They haven't quite gotten all, all crazy looking yet, but they will. All right, look, one here, and then that one's like buried. That's the turf? Yeah, yeah, that's the seedling right there. That's a slightly large one right there. I mean, these are, you know, they don't get, I mean, I have, I guess, what would be considered gigantic ones compared to this in my collection. You know, you, you come out to the habitats to see these plants and sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you get lucky and you get to see them in bloom, which is always a special treat. And today we're lucky, which is good. It's a good sign at the first sight that we're having this kind of luck because, uh, you know, I, I think it's honestly, it's a kind of a testament. You see how dry all the like the shrubs are, all the little weeds and everything. They're basically dead. That's a sign, like, that's how dry everything is. And even in that dryness, even in that just aridity with these plants, they don't care, they don't care. This doesn't bother them at all. This thing's pushing up just an absolutely radiant little bloom right there. And you've got a, a nice, this is kind of a nice little scene. You've got three beautiful little plants growing there. I mean, really they're little, but only compared to like that or that, I mean, those are pretty big. You got this Apuntia here, which I'm gonna avoid touching, like it's, my life depends on it. And then you've got the big Biznaga. This is the uh, uh, Echinocactus Platyacanthus. And this is a little guy, they get pretty massive. Uh, we, may, we may encounter some big ones on this trip, if we're lucky. Agave Salmaniana. And this is, you know, we're, we're with one of the world-renowned agaveologists. And he doesn't, he's not excited about this agave, so. I don't know what to say, it's just, it's there. It's background fodder. Ooh, yeah. So we're here in Peña de Bernal, and we're about to witness a beautiful Cadenicarpus pseudomacrocelli growing in between cracks in what seems to be limestone. Just beautiful flowers enjoying them. Okay, so the reason this is called Pseudocrucigera is you see it's got the little crosses. The spines form like a little cross. Um, so, and this is Pseudocrucigera because, uh, well, you know what? I, I don't know, actually. Are you kidding me? Hidden within the harsh, sun-baked landscapes of central Mexico, a botanical jewel clings to life. We're in the heart of Querétaro, a region renowned for its unique and resilient flora. Here, amongst the limestone cliffs and arid scrublands, resides Cadenicarpus pseudomacrocelli, a small cactus with a big story. This captivating little cactus, once classified under the genus Turbinicarpus, is a testament to the intricate and ever-evolving world of botanical taxonomy. For years, it was known as Turbinicarpus pseudomacrocelli, sharing a genus with some of my favorite miniature cacti. However, recent phylogenetic studies analyzing DNA and morphological characteristics revealed significant differences. These studies highlighted that Pseudomacrocelli possessed unique traits, particularly in its seed and flower structure, setting it apart from true Turbinicarpus species. Now, as a result, it was reclassified into its own distinct genus, Cadenicarpus, this shift underscores the importance of ongoing scientific research in refining our understanding of the natural world. It also highlights the subtle yet crucial variations that define plant evolution. However, this unique species faces significant threats. Its limited distribution, coupled with habitat degradation due to mining, overgrazing, and illegal collecting has pushed this cactus to the brink. It is currently listed as endangered on the IUCN red list. This conservation status serves as a stark reminder of the vulnerability of specialized desert flora. Efforts are underway to protect this remarkable cactus and conservationists are working to safeguard its remaining habitats, to propagate plants in controlled environments 
and to educate local communities about its ecological importance. Seed baking and in-situ protection are crucial to ensure the survival of Kidney Carpus pseudomacrochelli for future generations. It's about maintaining the delicate balance of the desert ecosystem. In the face of adversity, Kidney Carpus pseudomacrochelli stands as a symbol of resilience and the ongoing need for conservation. Its story is a testament to the intricate beauty and fragile existence of the desert's hidden enchantments. I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you hit the like button, share, subscribe, and if you're able to and you appreciate the comment and want to support the work I'm doing, you can become a Patreon supporter, which I would appreciate from the bottom of my heart. And you know what? If you've done something uh, sinful in your life, this is a good way to like pay a penance, you know? Um, For even just a measly little $2 hairs, Patreon supporters will be protected from mealy bug and scale. You plants will never rot and you will get to support the content that this fella here is making for y'all. So if you can show a little love and hit that Patreon link, you'll get super top secret access to stuff I can even tell you about here on YouTube due to the ever watchful eye of our corporate overlords. Okay, back to the video. Probably described after Crucigera would be my guess. But then you've got the, oh, there's two. <laughs> there's, these are so, they're so small. You don't even notice them when you're looking right at them. I've been waiting for a lifetime for this, man. It's really spe special. Special. Probably a life-changing experience, honestly, and it's just the beginning, man. Dude, look at that. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh. So now, I, I've heard rumblings on the internet, you know, people like that don't like mammalarias or whatever, you know, they're all the same, you know, they're, they're, they're boring, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't understand how you can say such a thing. When you see something like this, look at that, come on. This thing has got one, two, three, four. It's got, yeah, nine heads. Nine heads. Uh, and just flush to the ground, look at that. That's a seedling of the ma'am, right? But then right here, you can see the plants. You can actually see like the epidermis and really kind of get a look at them. And what's cool too is now you look at that, you look at this clump, right? You look at that ma'am and then let's see if I, let's see if I can still see it. Where did it go? Okay, so look, you notice, you notice the radial spines? This one has radial spines. This one actually looks like it's wanting to be a little more like Crucidra, but that's not because this plant is actually different. That's just its seedling stage. It hasn't hit puberty yet. Once it hits puberty, unlike people who then grow hair, this thing is gonna lose those radial spines and it's gonna end up looking more like this. Now this is, you know, hard to, hard to estimate an age on a plant like this, but and you can just tell from the conditions and how flat this thing is growing that it's it's not getting it's not getting that uh, top tier greenhouse treatment. So I'm sure it's probably pretty damn old. This one's absolutely beautiful. Like you can just it's just what the flowers open perfectly open, and you can see that big giant rock in the background. It's so pretty. I, I risked it all to sit down on the ground. There's like vicious ants and all kinds of spines and sharp stabby things, you know. Those things are the size of pencil erasers almost. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty incredible, you know? Seeing these things out here like that, and you get to see them in their natural environment. Really appreciate them for what they actually are, you know? Um, that's very special. And uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for helping me to make this a reality. I just want, like, really, like, thank you. Thank you for helping me to be able to do this and to make make these videos and to come out here and to be able to see this stuff and share with you guys like it is uh it fulfills me deeply and i thank you from the bottom of my heart for it really i do um it's it's pretty pretty incredible <laughs> pretty incredible i feel unbelievably lucky Looking, I was shooting a video of one of the echinomastus. Uh, kind of